everyone, my name is Gus Ewerin of UFOSightingsDaily.com. What you're looking at is an underwater Boeing 777. At least that's what it looks like to me. There's at least a chance that this is correct. Now, it's very difficult to find. It took me another 15 minutes just to find it again. It is there on Google Earth Maps, so you can find it too. I believe this might be uh, a lead on the... Um, Malaysian MH370 airliner that went down and supposedly it went down in this area um, I will show you a map in just a second can you see this underwater depiction here I did not draw this I only drew a circle around it so you could see it better now it's probably quite difficult to see but it's something it looks like nose back tail wing wing now, it's difficult to see close up the details, really not very good, but it looks like it could be an underwater jet liner that's about six to nine feet under the water. Now, let's switch. Uh, here we are at the Cape of Good Hope. Let me zoom out. Okay, we're at the Cape of Good Hope in Africa. This is very far from Malaysia, about 5,200 miles from Malaysia. So now let me show you where it is again. We're zooming in. We're zooming in. And here we are. Do you see that little beach right there? Okay, right here. This is the area right over here where my cursor is. Now it's difficult to see. It's right here in this area. Now I really can't zoom in much on this it's quite difficult and if you want to find it you're not going to find it unless you do this so listen carefully uh, right here at the top upper left hand corner you'll see a timeline well you can see that timeline if you push a special button which is down here at the bottom left hand corner see this cursor moving around right down here you push that button and the timeline above will appear. When this timeline appears, you switch it to 7-26-2015. Okay, that's about a, a little bit less than a year after the crash happened, but it looks like they made it to the coast of uh, Cape Hope, Good Hope, Cape of Good Hope. Uh, so it, it's quite unusual. I know it's not what you expect me to find. I was actually looking for a, a UFO at the time. Um, and instead I found this in the ocean and at first I wasn't sure what it was and then I took some Google Earth measurements and came out with uh, about the size of a 747 now look at the square here if this airline right here is this this is the piece that's left this is what we're looking at see inside the square this part is gone these parts of the wings are gone this back part whoops would be gone but some of the tail, some, some parts of the tail are visible a little bit. So the wing tips are gone, the front is gone, most of the top of the engine, most of the, this engine is gone, but still a long piece sticks out, as you can see right here, a long piece sticks out. The fuselage right here, sorry, I'm not a pilot, I'm not up with these uh, technical terms here, but it's right here in this area right there. Uh, here is the back wing right here back wing. Here is the bottom wing, bottom wing, right here. I'm going through this fast, we got stuff to show you. Okay, uh, let's get rid of this and close that. Right over here, let's do some Google Earth measurements real fast. Now the actual one is right here. It is pretty big. Okay, we got a wingspan of 60 meters, so that should be 30 meters on each side about. So let's see what we got. Um, put on my meters to match and go from here to here. Okay, we got about 15 meters, 15 meters. So 15 meters here, maybe 15 meters on the other side. It comes out to about 30 meters. That's about half 
after wreckage, you could imagine maybe just half exists left over. Okay, so this says wingspan is 60 meters. We found 30 meters. Um, the the length is about 63 meters long. Okay, let's do that. Whoops. There we go. About there, uh, 26 meters of it left. 26 meters of it left. But Google Earth ruler could be off. It could be off a lot. I'm not talking just uh, 10%. It could be off 50%. I found it even off much more if you look at Google Mars and Google Moon. But it's quite extraordinary. Now, uh, one of the things you need to know is that this, it doesn't say the width as much, but uh, the width itself, okay, width, 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 length, wingspan, doesn't show you the width, but the width here is almost 10 meters across. Um, let's go across here. Okay, uh, 5.97 meters, uh, pretty close, pretty close. But I wanted to give this to you guys and let you guys decide what it is, report it to authorities who might need it. At least it's a lead, at least it's something. It's something we had more more than what we had five minutes ago, okay? This may only have 1% of 1% chance of actually being there, but it's extraordinary, it really is. Now tell me, let me show you why it's extraordinary. Now the Cape of Good Hope is in a location where current comes down here, okay? See my, this is Africa. Water comes this way, pushing things that might still be floating a little bit, and it appears that this airplane is floating a little bit. Uh, pushed against the coast, maybe from a typhoon or something. Uh, here is Reunion Island. Okay, right here is where the first piece was found. Today they reported on CNN, uh, when I got back from work, that there's another piece found right off in this area, okay? Uh, pretty cool. So there's one piece down here, one piece over here, and what I think is right here. Now, now the maps, the maps, this is Malaysia. Let me show you Malaysia, it's right here. Um, some people suggest that the Malaysian airline did this, okay? They think that it turned, turned, they saw it on radar, turn, but right here they think it turned again and went down. Now that's a big mistake they've been making the whole time. They've been saying it's, it turned again. There's no evidence to say it turned. Everyone's assuming. But if this guy wants to die, if he really didn't really care, he would fly straight out. See this red line? I drew this dotted line right here. I, I think he flew straight out. His gas will run out right about here. That's where his fuel will run out. And I believe the waters broke, uh, broke some of the pieces and some of the pieces floated off to Reunion Island up here around Madagascar area. And the larger piece floated over here. Yes, I think it's still floating. I don't think it sank to the bottom like we thought. Uh, airplanes are light. They tend to move, especially with strong currents. And around the Cape of Good Hope, it is the strongest currents around the ocean. It is very strong when water's moving around the coast. That's why a lot of ships get damaged over there long ago. Uh, so let's show you this. Okay, I'm trying to make this as fast as possible so I do not board you. Uh, I already lost some of you, huh? Okay, let's go to nautical miles because right here it says <coughs> nautical miles. What's the passenger engines wing capacity range right here? Uh, 12,000 kilometers or 6,900 nautical miles. Okay, so we will begin right here, Madagascar. Let's begin here. And let's move this down out of the way. Uh, I believe it continued across. Here's Reunion Island. Right now we're at 3,100 nautical miles. This is where I believe it crashed uh, at 4,000 miles. And look, here's the limit of 5,600 miles. Uh, let me hit that again so you can see it. Okay, there it is. Uh, you see it says 6,900 nautical miles. Okay, so the limit it goes way past this. Let's do that again. Okay. Sorry. There we go. Uh, it goes 6,900 nautical miles. And here it is. Right here is where it went to. Uh, it could have easily flown here. It could have easily flown here. If Boeing says that this has 6,900 nautical miles it can travel, this is actually 
uh, it says down here, I don't know if you could read it in full screen though, it says 5,100 nautical miles. That's a full 1,000 nautical miles less. Let's switch that to kilometers. Kilometers. Okay, kilometers is 9,500 kilometers. Okay, that, that is really far, but this is a Boeing 77, and Boeing 77 can travel 12,000. That's a whole thousand kilometers more, okay? We're talking a long range here. So that, that's right there in itself is pretty amazing. Um, so the pieces found, pieces found were here, over here someplace, and down here is where I found it. Now let's show you that map again so you can see it, and I'll bring this up right here so you can have a look at that too. Um, but you see, they all assumed it turned away because it was heading up here to Beijing, China. And with, that was only like uh, uh, two and a half, kilom two and a half thousand kilometers away. And it turned, but right here they lost it. They lost it right here because they assumed it turned and that's why they lost it, but it continued going straight. It did not turn. Let's see if I can make that a little bigger for you guys. Okay. So it continued going straight, came down, and moved up, and crashed somewhere over here in the ocean. It may have actually tried to land at an airport in the Cape of Africa. It may have tried. At the last minute, he may have changed his mind and said, no, I can't do this, and he headed for land. And maybe he just crashed along the coast. Maybe it was at a, a moment, an hour, nobody can see him. He, they said uh, boats in this area right here saw the plane flying extremely low, extremely low. So it was below the radar, couldn't be seen, which explains why the airplane disappeared off radar. Uh, so pretty amazing stuff. Let me bring that over and bring this up. Here is a close-up of the picture right here. Just pause that for a second so you can look at that. Here is a Boeing 777-2000. Okay, now the stats on this one is a little bit different than what I showed you. The stats here say 5,000. So it, it's really, um, internet says different things. There's like a thousand nautical miles difference between what they say the 77-200 does. Um, it's hard to say, I guess only Boeing can do that. And from what I hear, Boeing, uh, <coughs> Uh, had the engines made by Rolls-Royce and Rolls-Royce apparently um, monitors wherever their plane engines are all the time and uh, Rolls-Royce doesn't seem to want to turn this over to Malaysian Air. I don't know if that's true or fact, true or fiction, but uh, it's an uh, interesting tidbit of knowledge. Okay, here it is. Let's show you. Let's show you. Let me show you one last time before I go. This is Africa. We're zooming in, zooming in. Okay, we're not down here at the bottom. This thing crashed around here and drifted probably a while. Now the bad thing is the photos of this that I have are not current, they're not the newest photos. I had to move the timeline back, okay? I had to move the timeline back. The airplane's right here. The airplane's right here. Now I circled it here. So you can take a look at it, you can compare it right here, this circle right here, okay? So it's right here. A little bit difficult to see. Uh, but I've been doing this a lot. I found sunken ships uh, in Alaska, and I found Obama's head. I found all kinds of garbage on Mars and the moon. Uh, and I thought, hey, what is this? It looks like a plane. I thought maybe a shipwreck at first, but no. It the, the shape, the size, it looks just like a plane. Now remember, to find this, you have to you have to push this on the bottom left. This little timer next to the clock, there's a time. Push that button or you will not find this. N next step, come up here and push this button here to move away. Whoops, see it's all gone. Changes the pictures. Got to change it back has to be 7-26-2015. 7-26-2015. Now you could go way, way back, all the way back to 2002, okay? This is 2002. Here is the same location, uh, 2004, 2006, 2008. The plane crashed in 2014. 2013, of course, there's nothing there. Uh, 2014, um, still... From what I saw, I didn't see anything there. The detail is much lower because of the, the angle of the sun. 
Um, whoops, we lost it totally. Too much uh, clouds and smog. 2015, January. Interesting. Okay, but you don't really see anything there. Or if you do, maybe you could see it. I don't see it yet. Uh, it could be there. Okay, January 2015. Apparently, Google uh, updated this time. Between uh, 2014 and 2016, they updated it like six or seven times for some odd reason. Let's move this away. Do you see all these little lines here? Those are the times that Google updated because they know this flight could be in this area, I think. Okay, 2015, 126, 2, no, 3, too foggy, 4, very close. Round 3, and whoops. Wow, they updated it a lot, didn't they? They really did. Okay. Oops. Did I totally lose it? I did. Okay, see how easy it is to miss? I found it and I lost it. I can't find it again. So it's a little difficult to find. Uh, it's not that easy to find. It's very, very difficult. And I will look over here. Move up to 726 where we belong. Remember, 726 is where it is at. We see it right down here. Right down here. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. I will put this up here for comparison and try to move this over a little bit. Okay. There you go. You can see the airplane here and the airplane here a little bit enlarged and the Boeing over here what it looks like um, alright guys uh, if you like this video please like and subscribe I know there's only 1% of 1% chance maybe even less that this is the actual airplane I'm not saying this is 100% I'm not guaranteeing anything and also there's another little fact is this was taken back in 7 26 2015 uh, so it's it's been quite a few months, not quite a year, but it's been enough months that this thing could, if it's floating six to nine feet under the water, this thing could have floated uh, 30 to 60 kilometers away by now, especially with the, around the Cape of Good Hope area. It's a very strong currents, especially during typhoon seasons and things. So uh, if someone's going to be searching for this, they should really start here, but then work their way to the direction the current's going. Okay, well... I wish those people good luck and I hope they get closure for this terrible disaster. Um, I hope authorities find it soon because uh, those families really deserve to know what happened. Alright, see you later.